What were some of the questions that the high school students asked, and were you also so surprised at how advanced they were? Mm, uh, well, there wasn't a whole lot of time for questions. Oh, I see. A lot of a lot of it was uh, based around where where is sort of the emotion, where where is the composer, uh, you know, our composer Adrian Ellis, where does he start? Like, how do you look at something with no music and say, how do you choose what instrument? How do you choose? Like, are you, are you telling the action of the story versus the is it is the music themed around the characters? Um, I think film music has an amazing appreciation. So you know, a lot of them would. We ask some. We ask questions like, "What's your favorite film scores?" And like, you know, Inception, Star Wars, uh, Edward Scissorhands. You know, the, all the big composers come out. So, I feel they were. We had some music classes as well, so they had some very specific things to ask of our string quartets and and how the and then people that are just interested in filmmaking, understanding. So it's recorded here, but then how does it actually get mixed into the movie? And uh, and this one was a little different too because Adrian and I we had. You know, you typically music fades out as the scene ends and then it cuts to a new scene and a different music cue comes in or it doesn't. With this, there's no start and stops to scenes being in a single take. So we, we, we had a real trouble figuring out, okay, we want to have music come in emotionally, but it's going to be, it can't feel cheap or forced or just suddenly like, and now there's dramatic music because there wasn't an organic way to sort of bring it in. Uh, so we, we had uh, not, not fights, but a lot, of, a lot of head scratching on that one of what to what to do. We always knew we wanted to do the music live, but uh, it was, everything on this film was a different process. So I, I should have figured when we got to music, it would be, it was going to be a challenge. And Last Call has distribution? Nope. We uh, made the film. Our intention was, I founded a distribution company and we said, if all else fails, we will self-distribute. Uh, I've been through the distribution ringer a few different times where I've never seen the profit participation I'm supposed to. It is not uncommon in this business. Unfortunately, the music and the film industry have this very crooked reputation and it's for a reason. It is crooked. <laughs> it should, it deserves a terrible reputation. Uh, so if we are not able to secure a reputable distributor that also will get the film to the masses and cut us a fair deal um, with proper profit participation, we said, we, this is a small enough amount of money that I feel confident in taking it out ourselves. And uh, we have some sort of inventive ways that I haven't seen before to release indie film. Uh, I'm no stranger for marketing and trying to sell out screenings in different cities. Had success with that, so we thought we could definitely do it on our own. So that, that was part of the, the fun of this movie, having the freedom to know that we didn't have to shoot something that would please distributors or again, because a lot of times an indie film gets made, you find a proper distributor and they say, okay, we want to change this, this, maybe change this. It's like, well, we can't, we, we can't edit anything in this movie. The most you could do is adjust the music or, or the color correction. But other than that, it is what it is. So we knew we'd be up against maybe not even being able to find a traditional distributor. Uh, and when you make something experimental, you just, you never know what you honestly, even as the director, you go, this is what we hope for. We don't know how it's going to turn out or how audiences will receive it. So we said, let's just make something that we're comfortable releasing ourselves. And we know that that's, that's a plan that we're all happy with, would be thrilled with. And that way, anything else that comes along really is a dream come true. Are you able to divulge some of how you found the distribution company or what some of your plans are or some of that's like under mm -hmm. wraps? It's um, yeah, it, that, that's all still very initial. It, it's called... Uh, FU Entertainment, okay. which is uh, an acronym for uh, Filmmakers Unite, because if nobody else will stand up for us, then we should just say FU to the entertainment industry. Uh, just a little tongue in cheek stab at things. Uh, but I do, you know, I have a lot of director and producer friends and that make these great indie movies and sort of all get stuck in the same, the same system, don't earn their money back. Like some, you know, you know this is the Kevin Smith model, you max your credit cards or put two years of your you know, uh, finances from your, your day job into making a movie and then to not see a penny back while somebody else makes money off of you, it's it's just wrong. So, you know, there's there's a little bit of hope, not that I want to become a full-time business manager distributor, but if it, if it worked and we were able to do it, I might be comfortable also assisting some of my friends in, in finding a way for them to get their films out there. I think one of the, the greatest skill sets that I've, I've had the chance to do is you know, Canada also has wonderful grants available to filmmakers that, that were part of what we were doing with 
the high school shooting movie with four shots. It was a large part of how we got the scare house financed and made. So I've, I've had a blessing of having mentors in Canadian distributors, uh, Canadian producers like Rob Merrilies out of Vancouver, who is an executive producer on four shots, learning the financing system and really studying and understanding the business side of film, which a lot of filmmakers don't arm themselves with. I think they do themselves a disservice of not understanding the business before they pick up a camera uh, because you might make a movie that's unsellable. And that's something you definitely don't want to do. No matter how good of a movie you made, it might be unsellable because it has to check certain boxes. Will it work in this country? Can it sell direct on, on iTunes? Will it, will it hit this, this certain market? Or if it's the horror market, but it's too funny, horror comedies are this weird space that don't always hit. Uh, so I think as much as most artists don't want to be business people or understand financing, like uh, the, the best thing you could arm yourself with is understanding all aspects of the business as well as the creative. Do you think it's easier to sell a title in Canada? Do you think Canadians are less, they're more open to looking at topics, whereas the U.S. maybe in the last few years too has gotten more, is constricted? Um, I think, yeah. For, I mean, French Canada makes some beautiful films that, that tackle some, some big big topics. Having that government financing helps a lot often because then a private investor or a distributor or studio doesn't have to put as much of the risk capital up because the, the government grants, the tax credits are, are taking a, a large portion of, of, of the, the cash equity that it takes to make a film. So there's a more willingness to make, you know, let's, let's call them bolder films or, or less, uh, less common stories because there isn't as much of a financial risk. But I think as, as audiences go, uh, I think we're just, just as open as the Americans or, or anywhere else. It's just a matter of how to, if those films are made and available to us, we'll watch them. Uh, another thing we're fortunate with with Canadian film is that the broadcasters, the TV stations and, and whatnot, cable stations uh, do have to accept a certain amount of Canadian content as part of their deal to broadcast in Canada. So we're very fortunate that sometimes just, just by default, they have to buy and program Canadian content. So as a Canadian filmmaker making a Canadian film, there are outlets that are available to you that favor you over, say, an American movie or a British movie or anything else.